We welcome all of you tonight coming together to honor the Lord and edify one another. We welcome our live stream audience also. We always appreciate you being with us. Amen. Tonight, this is the 11th sermon on the subject of the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to look at it from this viewpoint, the coming of the Christ and God being justified. Amen. <clears throat> now, as we've emphasized, many things are going to occur when Jesus comes. If there's any question about these things really happening, it's all going to be answered when Jesus comes. Amen. Christ himself will appear. Amen. Everyone who's questioned his existence, everyone who hasn't taken him seriously, everyone who hasn't submitted themselves to him, they're going to see him. Yeah. He's not coming to lead us in a laughing contest. Yeah. Christ himself shall appear. When Jesus appears, Peter's taught this specifically, the natural order is going to pass away Amen. with a great noise. And the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein are going to be burned up. See, so if there's any question about whether this will happen or not, when Jesus comes, it's, this is going to happen. Death will once and for all be overthrown. There's going to come a period when there'll never again be any death as it's now known. It's going to end. And at that time, you want to have died well. I used to have a question I would ask Preachers, when I meet with them more than often than I do now. And the question was this, what is the most distinguishing trait about your congregation? Because this isn't just for preachers. It's just, well, what, what is the most distinguishing trait? And you hear all, all kind of things, most of them very frothy. So a person turned his back on me one time. said, well, what's the most distinguishing thing about your fellowship? I said, our people all die well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. If death's going to be overthrown and conquered, you want to have passed through the experience like God intends for you to pass through it. When Jesus comes again, there'll be an entire generation that doesn't experience death in the normal manner. Yeah, right. Those that are, what the scriptures say, alive and remain. Yeah. They're going to be changed in an instant, yes. in a twinkling of an eye. Natural body gone, resurrection body present. That's going to happen when Jesus comes. Yeah. All of this is going to happen Rapidly, if you see, you'd have to slow it down a lot to see the mm -hmm. sequence of it, but it's going to happen. When Jesus comes again, the wicked will be gathered. See, the wicked are dispersed too. <laughs> the wicked are dispersed now too. Some of them go to church. Yes. That's the truth. But they're going to be gathered. <coughs> gathered together and Jesus said in bundles, that yeah. means probably groups. Amen. And the righteous, they're going to be gathered. They're in a state of dispersion, see? So they're hard to tell who they are because they're in a state of dispersion. So this has confused a lot of people. So just to make it easy for themselves, they reduce the requirements for being righteous, and that way you're able to kind of include more people. Well, when Jesus comes, the righteous are going to be gathered together, and they will be distinct, yes, absolutely distinct. 
from the ungodly. The new heavens and the new earth, they'll appear. They exist now. They exist now, but they just don't appear because they're of a different order, see? So when the present heavens and earth pass away, then that's like the, the scaffolding is removed, and there it'll be. Been there all along. Some people believed it and relocated. <laughs> While you're in this world, they relocated. And set with Christ in heavenly places. But see, this is all going to, when Jesus comes, this is going to clear all this up. The day of judgment will commence. When Jesus comes again, he come out to judge the earth, the psalmist said. It's going to happen when Jesus comes. But the coming of the Lord has something to do with God himself. And that's what we want to look at tonight. See, God is not content to be unknown. In fact, it's a sin not to know God. I'm going to, say, I'm going to establish that uh, tonight. The whole economy of salvation revolves around this knowing God, being familiar with God, being able to recognize God when he's there, being able to detect when his blessing isn't there. See, that's all involved in knowing God. This is life eternal, Jesus said, that they might know thee. That's what God wants. God wants you to be familiar enough with him to say when he's present that it's the Lord. Yes, it this is. is the Lord. Yeah. Be able to say that. And in this economy of salvation, it's shameful not to know God. This is, a, this is shameful. Well, we have a word on this, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness. Now, this is addressed to a church. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. Some in, that, some in your Corinthian church don't know God. I speak this to your shame. Why is it shameful? Because salvation is calculated to produce this familiarity with God Amen. and if you deal with religious people in any sense maybe at work maybe your neighbors maybe your relatives you soon find out that a lot of people don't have very much understanding about God himself they just attribute things to God that are wrong and they're yeah. and it'd be in order to say you know you should be ashamed to be so ignorant of God you should be ashamed this is a point of shame. See, God wants to be known, which means he's made provision to be known, which means it's shameful not to know him. So if you're confused by circumstance, get to work on this. Amen. Knowing God. God has determined that there will finally be no question about his existence. Uh, at this present time, for 6,000 years, he's allowed yeah. men to say, well, I don't believe there is a God. I tried it out, and I don't, I can, I don't believe in God anymore. I, I tried this Christian thing and things like this. At least have the courtesy to frown if someone says it before you. Yeah. At least frown and give them a tip off that this is, this is a spiritually empty-headedness and very foolish. Or you could say something like, well, after talking to you, I can understand why you don't believe in God. <laughs> yeah. But in your state of ignorance, I can understand, like a spiritual idiot. Yeah, right. Amen. This sounds hard, but that, that's the way it is. Yes, amen. <laughs> Notice what he says through Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, 23. I have sworn by myself. This is God. I have sworn by myself the words gone out from my mouth in righteousness and shall not return Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear or confess. It's quoted in the New Covenant. This is going to happen. You don't think I'm real? You think the Muslims worship the same God as we do? Is this what you think? You're going to bow your knee to God, and you're going to confess he's the one. This is going to happen. See, we, this has to be set before people. Yes, 
They need to be told this. There's all kinds of people going to church that don't believe this. Yeah. See, how do you know they don't believe it? By the way they're living their life. They don't have to tell anything. I don't have to have an interview with them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So God's going to settle that score. Romans 14, 11. It is written, as I live, <laughs> saith the Lord, just as surely as I am, just that surely, Every knee shall bow to me, to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. That's going to happen. Now, professed eschatology, which is purely humanistic, a study of last things, a professed eschatology that overlooks this is false to the core. Because Eschatology, as presently conceived, perceived, doesn't think about it this way. It thinks in terms of what's what are going to be the surrounding events toward the end of the world. That's what that's all all systematized eschatology. That's how it thinks. What's going to be some of the traits and as we approach the end? But that's not. Scriptural exotology is, it's going to end. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but what happens toward the end, that's not the ultimate point. The ultimate point is, it's going to end. That's right. Amen. And it's going to end whenever God is seen as he is. Mm -hmm. See? Actually, that happens now. <laughs> that happens now. When you see the Lord as he is, earth-centeredness ends. Amen. Just stops abruptly right there. Every com every created personality, as our text stated, will eventually know God is right. God is true. He's going to be justified. God's going to be justified, or or confirmed to be true. In all his sayings, everything he said is going to find out this is precisely true. That's right. Amen. And he's going to overcome when he's judged. See? Every person is disobedient, doesn't make any difference who it is, has a controversy with God. Right. They don't think Amen. what God said is true. Yes. And if they say they do, they just have lied. That's right. yeah. Everyone who neglects God, right. they don't believe he really is. Yeah. They don't. Oh, intellectually, I understand they believe God exists like they believe the mathematical tables or something like that, but that's pretending. That's, right. that's pretending. It's pretense is what it is. But when, he, when Jesus comes, there will not be one personality in the assembled universe who questions uh -huh. that God is or that questions whether God was right. It's all going to be crystal clear. Amen. Amen. Now, for some people, that they'll say, praise God, the time is here at last. Uh -huh. This is the one we've been waiting for. We tried to tell you. Other people will just say, oh, no and stand and tremble. Yeah. Yes. See, it's a matter of God overcoming objections. Actually, he could do it, easily do it, mm -hmm. but his mercy keeps him from doing it. If you want to know whose army is the greatest, you just wake up the next morning and Sennacherib's army is all dead. That's right. So that's one way God has of... Yeah. But some things he lets wait, he waits till the end yes. uh -huh. for people to know. So every unbeliever and every disobedient person has denied that God is true. <coughs> They've ignored his creation, which shouts out about God's uh, godhood in reality, his glory. They have ignored their conscience, which God created with a conscience, so their conscience condemns or excuses them, as Romans 2 says. So... Every person who is unbelieving or disobedient has ignored that. 
they've transgressed the purpose for their existence, which is to seek after God and family the happily they might find him. Acts 17. And it looks like they've, they've gotten by with it. Now, the point of this sermon is when Jesus comes, all that's going to be cleared up. Amen. With no exceptions. See, when things are cleared up by the world, it sometimes leaves a lot of questions. Like a, the judge settles the case, you know, but it, it's just a lot of questions left. To, <laughs> was this really, did we really settle the issue or not? Because a lot of settling that men do is by, it's comp by compromise. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, well, I'm willing not to be picky on that, or I'm willing to settle for that. But see, God is in his way. He's yeah. not saying, well, all right, I'm, you were 98% sure that I am, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll take the 2% that is faulty. No, God isn't this way. Right. It's got to be 100% or no percent. Yeah. Amen. And so salvation is calculated to move you into the 100% Amen. category, so you know God is true, you know he hasn't lied, and that's what has moved you to obey him and follow him and trust him and believe him and expose yourself to his word and everything else that's associated with godliness. Now let's look at this for, for a moment. <clears throat> that God's going to be justified in all his sayings. Now what, is, uh, what has God said? And let's have a sample. And these are going to be just, he's going to be justified, mean proved true, mm -hmm. beyond all question. Not mo not almost proved true, or mostly convinced. Not that, one hundred percent. Here's a statement he's made, Psalm forty six ten. Be still. Stop squirming around. Stop trying to get through this narrow gate like you're wiggling through a knot hole. Stop that. Be still. Know this. I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, you know this. I'm going to ultimately prove that what I've said is true. Represents the case. I'm going to prove myself to you ultimately. So be, be still now and listen to me now. This is God talking. He said some things about his son. Now he's going to be justified in all his sayings. He said it was a, it was a public confession when Jesus was, was baptized. He said, this is my beloved son. This, not, not, your, not your relatives. This is, this is my son right here. In whom I'm well pleased. And the Mount of Transfiguration, he had to hear him. Wait. Yeah, uh -huh. This is the one you should listen to. Don't fill your mind with the philosophies of this world. Yeah. Uh -huh. Listen to what Jesus said. Amen. Don't go down to the bookstore and buy up all the religious yeah. books, the novel sayings, and uh -huh. the contemporary perceptions of the pretended theologians. Listen to what my son said. Hear him. He's going to be justified. When Jesus comes again, it will justify that saying. Yes, uh -huh. There'll be people say, I should, I should have listened. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have listened to Jesus. Yeah. I should have been more familiar with what he said. But as Jeremiah once said, the summer's gone, the harvest is past, and we're not saved. Now, yeah. now the whole thing's over, and I'm on the outside, and I'm going to be headed for hell. If I had just woke up, I just would have just woke up. And just believe that this is what that Jesus is who God said he was. And listen to him. And if he if what he says contradicts what men say, take what men say and throw it in the garbage. Amen. If that's hard to accept now, it's not gonna be hard to accept when Jesus comes. It's, it's just that it'll be too late for an initial acceptance of it. God said that no man could be justified by works. That is no man can receive an okay from God because of what he does. Here's what God said. If Abraham were justified by works, this is Romans 4, 2. 
If Abraham were just, if Abraham, now that's one of the key people in human history. If Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, <clears throat> uh, but not before God. <laughs> and uh, God knew too much about Abraham. He knows too much about you. <laughs> you can be justified in saying that. The fact that God said, even if you're the best person on earth, and if you've done the best things on earth, you still have no right to glory before God. Amen. Okay, so when Jesus comes again, that's what you guys can be justified in that. Peter said, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's not uh, on a revealed schedule. It's on a schedule, but not a revealed schedule. Scheduled, going to come of the thief in the night, in the which the heavens and earth shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now you think how much, actually this is kind of a burden to my soul. People relying on the things that are of the world. They're, they're, they're trusting in it. God knows you have need. I say, God knows you have need, food, clothing, place. God knows you have need of these things. But there are people that trust in those things. And if they don't have a certain specified amount of those things, they kind of fall apart. Alas, alas. But when Jesus comes again, this saying is going to be, this, all this stuff is burning up. Yes, amen. And what you think of those things then is what you should start thinking about them yes. now. Amen. Yes. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue confess, Romans 4.11 says. And every person, as an individual, as well as in specified groups and cities and generations and so forth, Every person that is written, thus saith Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess. See, that's a saying. That's a saying, a divine saying. And when Jesus comes again, that saying will be like held out before people. Say, see, see, I told you. Yeah. I told you when you were slapping through life, you know, mm -hmm. you were slothful. You weren't serious about God. You gave me a little bit of your time here and a little bit of your time there. You frittered away your time on things that are secondary, but you, you treated them like they're primary. I told you. I told you you're going to bow to me. I told you you're going to admit publicly. This is a public yes. confession. Yes. Because I'm afraid to confess Christ before men. Well, and you're not ready to be received. Amen. That's, that's Amen. all. Yeah. Whosoever shall confess me before men. Him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. So when Jesus comes again, you're going to confess him before men. So you, you best do it now. He, God's justified, see, in his saying. Every person will finally stand before him. The books will be open. And they'll be judged out of the things written in the books. See, what about all those sins I committed? Well, it depends what you did with them. If they'll probably be recorded there, but be a, there's a line, be a line to it. Debt canceled. Yes, amen. Debt canceled out on this one here. Then there'll be some that won't be, won't be canceled out. So there'll have to be some kind of a penalty. They'll have to pass through the fire. They'll be saved so as by fire. But some of your life, either you get rid of it now by confession and repentance, either you get rid of it now, or if it's burned up then, you will, as Paul said, suffer loss. Amen. See, that's, that's how it works. And it's going to be justified. God, to, God will be justified in saying that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I don't, people will remember, oh, I, I remember how he said that, but I didn't, I didn't take it too seriously. Here's another, yeah, it's a saying. Now, he would justify all his sayings. 2 Timothy 4.8, Wherefore, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing. 
everybody wants to be recognized as God made you that way. God made you. So you have a desire to be recognized. But that's to be you to transfer that for to him to recognize you. Amen. And if men do, that's just like a like a bonus, you know. Yeah. Favor of God and man, that's that's kind of a bonus. But the primary thing is to be received by him and the Lord, the righteous judge to give you a crown of righteousness. Amen. It may look like now you're never gonna get it. <clears throat> You may be put out of this environment, put out of that environment, rejected by this people, rejected by the other people, and, and it looks like, hey, no, no one is receiving me. I feel like, a, as David said, like a pelican in a desert and an owl in a wilderness. I just feel like I'm all by myself. Because uh, it's just that what, what you're going to receive is an escrow right now. It's reserved for you. Now, some people are willing to wait for this crown and to work in anticipation of it. Other people aren't. They're not, whatever the excuse, they're not willing to do it. But those who are, God will be justified in his saying. It was... Brother Tony will look at me, we'll call each other by our own names. It was worth waiting for, wasn't it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? It was worth waiting for. Yeah. It's worth being inconvenienced for. It's worth, yeah. a, worth shedding those tears about. It was worth being separated from my brethren. Mm -hmm. It was worth it. Be justified in his saying. <coughs> God has said, said this ahead of time, so no one needs to be ignorant here. Revelation 21 8, the fearful. You know, the, uh, the idea is you want to get yourself out of these categories uh -huh. if you're in any of them. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars will have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the outcome. He's, that's a saying. Now, that's a saying. God has given that saying. This is going to happen. So when Jesus comes, that's going to happen. Uh -huh. Amen. And the saints will judge the world when Jesus comes. This is a saying. See, I'm, we're saying that God's going to be justified in what he said. He's going to be vindicated. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Mm -hmm. Have you forgot this? Does it trouble you that somebody's judged you? Like that unjust judge? And it troubles you? Well, there's a sense in which it should trouble you. Your trouble will drive you to Christ if you, if you let it. Well, you've got to recall this. I'm going to judge him. <laughs> Yeah, you got you got to remember this because God's going to be overcome. God's going to overcome when He's judged. He said this is going to happen. The saints are going to judge the world. They judge angels. There's going to be some evil angels or spirits that heckled you when you were in the world, brought false doctrines within range of your hearing, uh -huh, yes. troubled you like that woman had a spirit of infirmity that bowed her over. That was an evil spirit did that to her. As an evil spirit did that to that young boy, yeah. threw himself in the fire, threw himself in the water, yeah. laid on the ground wallowing and foaming. An evil spirit did that to him. Uh -huh. That boy rise up in the day of judgment. He's going to judge those evil spirits. Amen. You bank on this. See, you live with this in mind. Even though you may not be able to prove this to the doubter. But... The doubter, the prospect for the doubter is pretty gloomy. Yes. God's going to be justified in all his sayings. Let's look at it this way. God's promised to reward you openly for things that you did that weren't seen by everybody. Yes. Here's a couple, a couple of sayings. These are sayings. He's going to over, be justified in all his sayings. 
give thine alms that they may be in secret. Don't be saying, don't be holding out a placard. I gave ten dollars today. I mean, I made a thousand dollars, but I gave ten. That, that, that not too impressive. And thy father which seeth in secret himself, I say himself, shall reward thee openly. That's coming. If he hasn't yet, he will. Again, Matthew 6, 6, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. I dedicate that to those who like to pray with their eyes open. Shut the door. Your eye is a door. Sit there while prayers are going on, your eyes wide open looking around. That's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Shut the door. Yeah, uh -huh. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Your father who sees in secret, which means he won't even see your prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? You just babbled when you pray because your mind is on something else. Yeah, right. Your father sees in secret will reward you openly. Boy, that's a saying now. He'll be justified in his saying. This is another one of his sayings. You can determine whether you believe this or not. Lay up for yourselves, for yourselves, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Do this now. Have a heavenly bank account. Lay up treasures you can't spend here. Huh? You can't use them here. Amen. Boil down to their essence. This is these are this is developing a capacity to receive what's on the other side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You want to live so you can spend what the tra what treasures are on the other side. Yeah. Lay up for yourselves treasures on earth are neither moss nor cruft, uh, rust doth corrupt, and thieves do not break through and steal. So, whatever you lay up in heaven with the Father, your enemies can't even get in. That's right. they, they can't even get in. Amen. Amen. So if they're getting at what you got, uh -huh. Uh -huh. put it someplace else. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> now here's another saying. Well, we're, I'm establishing here that God's going to be justified in all his sayings. That these sayings, some of which are diff very, very difficult for weak people or unbelieving people to accept that they are true and God's going to prove they're true once and for all so no one will doubt it. 2 Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, quit dabbling, and I will receive you. You see what? Well, I did all that, and I don't have a sense of reception. You just you probably lie about other things, too. Yeah. That's a lie. That's not the truth. Yes. Don't be saying stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You come out from among, from unholy alliances. We're talking about alliances yeah. here. Okay. We're not yeah. talking about just like rubbing That's elbows, right. yeah. Yeah. shopping at the Walmart, or uh -huh. Uh -huh. working at the job. We're not, we're not talking about that. Yeah. We're talking about you're, you're identified with these people. That's right. yeah. Come out, out from among them, be separate. Don't touch the unclean thing now. And, uh -huh. and you may not have a friend on earth, but I'll receive you. Yes. Amen. I'll receive you. Yes. Why don't you say, why don't people do that? Because they don't believe God will yes. receive them. That's, right. Amen. That's the bottom line, isn't it? They don't believe God will receive them, but he will. And when he, Jesus comes again, that's going to be... Confirm, or we could just say, I told you. Look at here. God's received as God is saying, Well done, good and faithful servant. He's going to say it in front of an assembled universe, and everybody's going to know, see, yes. what God said was true. Yes, I gave you, I'll give you one more here. Romans 10 11. The scripture saith, the scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Corinthians 3.16, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, The scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Uh -huh. Why won't they be ashamed? 
God will not let them be shamed. Now, Nebuchadnezzar may decide to shame them. He said, I told you boys to bow down and worship that image, and if you don't do it, I'm going to put you in a furnace of fire, and I'm going to heat it up seven times hotter. They said, well, we're not, we're not going to have... We don't, they didn't say, excuse us, Neb, while we pray for a moment. They were living for God. They didn't have to pray about this. They didn't have to consult among themselves about this. What do you think would be the best thing to do? How are we, how are we going to be able to influence other people if, we're, if, we're, if, we're die, if we die? They said, we're not going to bow. So Nebuchadnezzar tried to shame them. He threw them in a furnace of fire. Now, God has said, whoever believes on me will not be ashamed. Yes. So the fire wasn't doused. Mm -hmm. Fire wasn't put out. They did burn hot. Yeah. When they looked in there, they saw him walking around. Yes. Amen. And a, a companion had joined him. Right. And the only thing that burned off were their bonds. Yes. Amen. Amen. They were not ashamed. That's yes. what he meant. Right. Daniel, same thing. Darius said, look, I'm sorry, Daniel, I made this law. They tricked me into making this law that you could only pray to me as a god. You could pray to no god but me. I'm really sorry about it, but i got to throw you in a den of lions. And the king couldn't sleep all night. He, th he thought he'd shamed. He thought he shamed Daniel. And he, he liked Daniel. Early in the morning, he went out and said, oh, Daniel, he says, it was your god able to deliver you? And with calm repose from the dungeon, he spoke up, Oh, king, live forever. Whoa, must have been like a sword coming up from there. What happened? God didn't let Daniel be shamed. I'll tell you right now, it doesn't make a difference who you are, how young you are, how old you are, how learned you are. If you take your side with God and you believe and you take you take the consequences yeah. or you take up your cross that's what the cross is talking about the cross is talking about the consequences of your faith right. if you take it up God won't let you be ashamed Amen. and in the day that counts that dwarfs all other days when everyone else would be weeping and lamenting because they weren't ready God's going to, you'll say, I'm not ashamed. Here I am before the God of the universe. I'm standing before the Lord Jesus Christ and the holy angels, and I'm not ashamed at all. God was justified in his saying. See? And he overcame all the arguments against him. Now, true preaching affirms these facts to the people. These facts are accompanied by power to all who believe them. The response of men has no effect on the affirmations. How people receive what God has said doesn't have anything at all to do with what God said. Does it change it at all? I mean, all the world except Noah may choose to disbelieve God, but God's word still just as true as if it, it doesn't affect that at all, see? If fools say they, they do not believe in God, you retort by saying, but you will. Yeah. Amen. Right. Say it with power, without shame now. Tell them, tell them. Uh -huh. But you will. Uh -huh. Tell them what God said. Every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess. So you are truly one of the most ignorant persons I've ever met. Yes. Uh -huh. But I want to tell you that you will yes. believe in him. Or acknowledge that he's real. Yes. He declared, I am, and the unbeliever doubts it. But God will overcome. And he'll be seen to have spoken absolute truth. Now, if you believe this, this doesn't mean that you will be automatically insulated from disappointment and things like this. But it does mean that as you dwell upon this, eventually you'll rise to the top of the circumstance. 
eventually we will get to the point where you're you're not ashamed and you take delight in God's approval and it doesn't make any difference what anybody else says. That's God God will take what you have done. Yes. And he'll begin this justification process now. Yes. I mean him being justified in what he's saying, he'll give you he will give you experiences mm -hmm. that will tell you in your heart, see, God God did what he said he'd do. Yeah. It, it would look pretty bad, look pretty bad, look, look pretty gloomy. I just about gave up. I've, I've been there. See, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Pretty. I just about gave up, but I just decided if I could just, you got to hold on a, a day at a time, maybe sometimes an hour at a time, some, sometimes a minute at a time. <laughs> you say, I made it another minute. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. And then God will justify. He said he'll send you comforters. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will like calm you down. That's the peace of God. See, it? he'll calm your spirit down. He won't he won't answer all your questions, but he'll calm you down so you can do some more like clear thinking about it. What is all of that? That's God being justified and insane. And the ultimate of that is going to be when Jesus comes. And so let's uh, do a lot of talking about what God said yeah. Amen. and culture our spirits to receive what God said without saying, but what did he mean? You know, just, what's he saying? You know, try and get that kind of stuff out of your system uh -huh. because in the end, he's going to prove that everything he said was true. And now, through Christ, he'll prove it to you now. He'll prove it to you now, so you'll be able to join in the festivities then. Uh, the, Brother Aaron, do you have the exhortation? Brother Aaron.